So the, the way I got this, by the way, is that I said, if something is going around the circle and it has a certain velocity, then uh, the velocity is equal to the circumference divided by the time that it takes to go around once. So we did that in physics one as well when we did circular motion. Sometimes we did the problems in terms of the period. So then I can square both sides. I get gm over d pi squared d squared over t squared. And then cross multiplying, I can get t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over uh, gm d cubed. This is actually Kepler's third law of planetary motion. Kepler's third law, which he uh, discovered by 1619, said that the period of a planet squared is proportional to the distance of the planet cubed. So look how quick that was to calculate, to prove. Period squared is 4 pi squared over gm d cubed. And so again, you could go through this and put in whatever distance you want, and then put in the, the g of gravity, the mass of the, our sun, and you could get the period from that. Or if you know the period, you could calculate the distance. Uh, so let's say, let's do another planet as an example. Let's say I want to do Neptune. Uh, so what is its distance? The distance of Neptune from the Sun times 4 times pi squared divided by 6.673 times 10 to the power 11 divided by 1.989 divided by 10 to the power 30. Okay? So I get this huge number, and then I got a square root that. So t is equal to 520250831.16 seconds. When you do this calculation, since the basic unit of time in the matrix unit is seconds, you get the answer in seconds. So to convert that, you say four. Okay, we get 164 years. 164.86 years. So let's look at the table. The period of Neptune, it says here 164.86 years. Okay. 164.86. Looking at a table here, 164.86. Okay, perfect. Right on, 164.86. Awesome. Okay, so we saw that now. <clears throat> okay, now let's talk about uh, the energy involved in satellite motion. What's the total energy of the satellite? Because it has kinetic energy and it's got potential energy. So what is the total energy? So we have here M, uh, little m. The total energy of the satellite is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. The kinetic energy is half mv squared. And the potential energy, which we already know from the lecture before, is negative g mm M -M over the distance d. Okay? But we just got a, uh, an equation for v. What is the v of the orbit, right? What was that equation? V orbit is equal to square root of gm over d. So now you could square that. Minus gm m over d. So you basically have the kinetic energy is half of the absolute value of the potential energy. So the potential energy, uh, let's say the potential energy is equal to uh, ne negative 100 joules. If the potential energy of the planet or satellite is a negative 100 joules, then it's kinetic energy, so this is going to be the potential energy, 
the kinetic energy is going to be 50 joules, half of the absolute value of the potential energy. You see that? So GMM over D, this is GMM over D, but this is negative, and this is half of that. So it's going to be 50. And then 50 plus negative 100, total energy is going to be negative 50. So that's true for any orbiting satellite. This is also true, by the way, when we uh, study the motion of an electron around the proton at the atomic level, same exact thing. The electron has potential energy, negative, uh, then it's going to have electrical potential energy, K, Q, 1, Q, 2 over D. And then it's also going to have kinetic energy because it's moving, half mv squared. And then you're going to have half uh, K, Q, 1, Q, 2 over D. So exact same situation is going to be. As a matter of fact, that's how we can calculate the Bohr the orbits that are allowed in Bohr's model of the atom, then we can say that the angular momentum of the electron is quantized, and that's how we could get the Bohr model. Okay, so the final expression for the energy is becomes what? Negative GMM over 2D, right? Because this is 2, 2, and then you get negative GMM over D. So basically, the plot of the total energy as a function. So let's say d. Let's say this is the certain planet, and this is a certain satellite. And it could be a man-made satellite or a moon. So as it's going around, this is d. The smallest that d can be is equal to the radius of the planet, right? So if we plot the total energy as a function of d, the, the lowest it can get, okay, when we go inside of the planet, remember, then other stuff begin happening. But let's just worry about outside of the planet here. So this point is negative gmm over 2 times the radius of the planet, right? So as we go more closer to the planet, as we go more closer to the planet, this number gets smaller, this number gets bigger, but it's negative. So you get lower, lower, lower total energy. Okay? So, an object basically by itself, if, you, if, it's, uh, if it's kind of losing velocity by itself, it would tend to spiral inward, right? tends to spiral inward, spiral inward. So if somehow it was an unstable orbit, objects like to go towards lower potential, right? So objects left to themselves like to go towards lower potential, and they're going to go inward. So in order for us to uh, make them uh, go farther out, we're going to have to give them some more total energy uh, keep them farther into a farther out orbit. So the farther out they are, the more energy that they have, the, the closer to uh, zero that they have. So they would like to, objects like to go towards closer to lower potential and closer to each other. So that what that means in terms of satellite motion is when we send out a satellite, the farther out we want the satellite to be, the more energy we're going to have to give it in order to go to a farther out orbit and to go around the planet, okay? And the other interesting thing is the farther out that we want, the, the less the velocity of the orbit. So in other words, if we want a planet, a, a satellite to go farther out, we have to initially give it more velocity so that it can gain, go there, but by the time it gets there, it's gonna go around the planet at a smaller velocity. When it's closer in, it's going to go around the planet at a faster velocity, right? So this guy's going to go around faster. It's going to have more kinetic energy, but it's going to have much less potential energy, right? Uh, so it likes that. It prefers to be at a much, much less potential energy. If we want to give it more kick, we, give, we can give it a kick out here. By the time it goes there, its velocity is reduced, right? So now it has a less velocity, but it has a bigger potential energy. So the total energy has been, re uh, has been increased by going farther out. Okay, so